Welcome to New Life Live with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. New Life Live is dedicated to transforming lives one at a time, thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. Hi, everybody, and welcome to New Life Live. I say everybody, but I know it's just you in the car or you at home, work, and then I've got Mylon, and I've got Jill here, Jill Hub- Dr. Jill Hubbard, Mylon Yurkovich, he and his wife Kay. How We Love is their amazing book, Dr. Jill Hubbard. The latest one, I think, is Forgiving Our Fathers and Mothers. Is that true? Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's a great one. And how many people don't forgive their fathers? And mothers? You know, I say you got to get over your mom and dad, whether they're great or not. Because if they're, well, we know you got to get over them and resolve it and all if they're crummy. But if they're great, you have to get over that too. Because then, if you don't, you're going to be expecting husband or wife to be just like mommy or daddy. And they can't. They can't duplicate that. You know, one of the most important things is to have an adult voice around your parents, no matter what kind of parent they were. Yeah. So to be able to voice your opinions as an adult mm-hmm. is to claim your adulthood. Mm-hmm. Even if they don't acknowledge it, we have to claim our adulthood by yeah. having an adult voice to speak our mind about anything. Mm-hmm. Right. And many yeah. t- many times, and sometimes it's in opposition to their opinion. Well, and it can be a hard transition That's for right. parents, it, right? It can because be. you raise your kids a certain way, and when they start voicing differences, that can be kind of frightening. But we have to allow our children to discover, right? We've done what we can do, mm-hmm. and at a certain point, they've got to figure it out. Mm-hmm. And by showing them some respect and acknowledgement that they're allowed to have an opinion that's different than ours. Mm-hmm helps them right yeah we that means we have to be jill we have to be looking at the front windshield of the car Mm -hmm. as opposed to looking at the little child in the back seat through the rearview mirror eating a happy meal Mm -hmm. because we can keep our kids little in the back seat yeah well sure one more thing as a parent because as they grow it's a loss you lose that little child right that's right and some parents are in denial about that process Mm -hmm. that you just said well you not only want them to know that they can have a different opinion but they need to know that you care about mm-hmm. their different. Yeah. And you want to hear their opinion. And you're, you know, you've spent, preaching to myself here, uh, you've spent <laughs> as much time listening as trying as to talking. teach. You know. so, That's right. So, yeah, pre- yeah, preaching to myself here. Okay. So, and nothing against Happy Meals, okay? The, no, uh, no, I was just no, saying. No, no, no. Or rear view mirrors, you know. That's right. So, we've got something coming up Mylon and I and Kay his wife Kay we're going to be doing the intimacy in marriage weekend in Dallas Mm. and every city in the world can fly into Dallas or you can walk there are trains that go there a lot of different ways to get there but I'm telling you this is a great experience Mm -hmm. you know one of the things that's part of this they wanted me to mention is well Kay takes the women talks with them about being a sexually confident wife and and a lot of times you know we don't get the proper teaching and we just wonder we wonder and this can really change things where you're you're doing what is good for you and also good for the other person Uh, and mylon and i we work with the guys and we try to help them to see things maybe from a different perspective than they've seen before but if you sign up uh, between now and october the first you could save uh, $200 on this. Wow. Now remember, our intensives, we bring in therapists, Christian counselors. So you hear somebody speak and then you go to work. And uh, Becky Brown and I facilitated groups on two different weekends. And I, I have to say, miracles happened. Miracles happened on those weekends. It was amazing to see the change, the transformation. So you could be chugging along there in misery or kind of mediocrity. We could help you find the kind of marriage that you always dreamed of, thought not possible. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Come and join us. It's the Intimacy in Marriage Intensive. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We'll be back after this. I came into this thinking 
that my husband was the cause of many of our issues. The New Life Intimacy and Marriage Workshop is coming to Dallas, Texas, October 15th to the 17th. But after learning about our attachment styles, I understood how our past hurts were playing into our present problems. Join Steve Arterburn. It's been a dream of mine for a long time to help people to grow more intimately together. And we believe that everybody has room to grow in the intimacy level of their life. And Mylan and Kay Yurkovich. We help couples understand how their attachment style is sabotaging their current relationship. And then we teach them how to create comfort in a relationship. And New Life's group counselors will help you focus on the area that will benefit your marriage most. To register or to find out more, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Here at this workshop, we had our first ever conversation without yelling, blaming, and accusing. 1-800-NEW. L-I-F-E. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We are back. Steve Ardmore here. And by the way, a gift of any amount, we will send you Living Strong, Finishing Well. That's Dr. Dave Stoop's last book and maybe his best one i don't know I, it really is a wonderful wonderful book and he did what it says mm -hmm. in the book you know a lot of people are lying and they fake what they write about but dave you know he did live well he was consistent probably the most right consistent well, and he was human such being. an authentic person so yeah. you know he means yeah. what he what he writes so he lived well and you know he wanted the book entitled which we thought was a better title yep don't die before you're dead. Mm -hmm. And and he didn't do that. I mean, he lived right up to the very end and mm -hmm. and just uh, an amazing human being. And he's giving you some ways to live well and finish strong. And doggone it, how many people do we see messing up later in life? Why? Because they had everything together but one thing. And it's the one thing that tears everything apart. Well, it's a great book to help you. It's our gift to you for a gift of any amount. 1-800-NEW-LIFE, if you can help us, please do. Let's go to, uh, how about we talk over here uh, to Bobby. He's calling from Jefferson City, Missouri, listens on the podcast there. Hey, Bobby, how you doing there? Good, how are you guys? Excellent, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, well, I, yeah I, I probably thought you were, well, I did, I thought you were Bobby the the man. So Bobby the female. I have gotten that my entire life. No big deal. Well, okay. So um, I'll get right to my question. Um, so I'm a federal employee, and as you all know, that um, there's a COVID vaccine mandate um, on the table right now. Um, so I'm not anti-vax. I just want everybody to know that. But I am not supportive of this particular vaccine for a number of reasons. Um, so my question is: um, Is it appropriate to submit? a religious exemption for, from the vaccine. They've said that we can submit either, or, you know, we have the option of submitting either a medical or religious exemption for consideration. Mm -hmm. And they've also told us that they may not approve very many of them. Um, so is that, I mean, is that appropriate, do you all think? Well, um, so you're saying, or you would be saying, because of my my beliefs, my Christian beliefs i don't want the vaccine i don't is that really true is that the source right. of it because well, if, if it is if, if it my... yeah okay that's part of your what i was just going to say that's part of um, what i'm struggling with is is while i feel like my religious faith um for sure doesn't support it i am in my heart i know that i'm more upset um, by the fact that I feel like it's discrimination and I feel like it's unconstitutional and the fact that I, there's something not quite with these vaccines and I'm not comfortable taking them. So mm -hmm. I feel like if I submit a religious exemption, that's not really where my heart is. I mean, although that's true, it's not well, on my list of top four reasons. It would be number yeah. four. Right. Yeah, okay. So, Bobby, there are some um, sample religious exemptions floating around out there that that you can get a hold of um i i might like it might be a good idea to get a hold of one of those and read through what other people have quoted and and see where your heart is with that because really they're they're not asking for your top reason 
right? They're not asking for your second reason. They're True. saying it's either medical or religious. Those are your choices. So do you have a significant medical reason not to get it? And No. Okay. Thankfully. So um, so you might look at the religious exemption and see, and, and pray about it, and, and see, okay, can I in good faith and conscience um say that this i mean it's certainly one of your reasons Mm -hmm. and if that's the option they're giving you then you could decide if you should utilize that or not i talked to a medical doctor the other day bobby who um is a medical doctor i'll say that again and did not want to get the vaccine and used a religious exemption uh to uh petition the corporation he worked for and so he did not get vaccinated so Mm -hmm. it's it's you really have to stop and ask what do i want to use and what tools have been authorized for me to use Mm -hmm. and then i will use one of them and and it's just that simple yeah if if that's you can try it right and and there i i don't know there's a lot of doctors i've heard that aren't willing to give medical exemptions Mm mm-hmm that are hesitant right. about that too. Uh huh. Okay. So that's so, why the religious okay. one may mm-hmm. work better. Mm-hmm. Now, I have a couple of things I want to say. I do. I did get the vaccine, and um, I haven't gotten sick. But there is a wonderful, wonderful video by Eric Clapton. He's just talking as a normal person, and what happened to him when he took the vaccine. And um, it, I would just go online and listen to him because he's, he is an example of someone that it, it really did not go well. And so when it comes to a third shot, he, is, he, he went and he got vaccinated, had the two shots, but he's not going to do any booster no matter what. He just, he's not going to do it because it had such an, ad, the other two had an adverse effect. And he got a doctor. Uh, to say to him you must not take this it could you know do Mm -hmm. worse damage but uh, he his hands became so inflamed if he touched anything it hurt he plays the guitar Mm -hmm. you can only imagine what that's like so I want to say that and then I'm just going to say this I was listening to watching a program and the woman said I've had COVID and she says I, and a doctor was on with her. He said, I understand that I have a 27% higher immunity level than somebody that takes the vaccine. And so I don't want the vaccine. The doctor said, no, you're mistaken. It's 27 times more immune, not 27% more. You have 27 times the immunity if you've had it. And so I'm just, I'm not saying anything political or whatever. I'm just saying, that if I had had it, that would be really hard for me to sign up to take a vaccine that does have adverse effects for some people. Mm-hmm. And I've got an immunity level 20. I just don't see how you can force somebody who's had it and has that kind of immunity level to do something like that. I just, and I, in fact, I don't think you can. I think uh, it's unconstitutional. I think they're going to mm-hmm. eventually right. rule sooner or later, probably sooner well, than and, it is. And, and two, if you're somebody that's had it and God has given you those natural antibodies, who are we to say that that's not good enough? Right. right. So did Bobby, did, did Bobby say she had COVID? No. I don't know. No, she didn't. I was you just making a statement. Okay. No. I just had some strong feelings about I, not- that. Not to my knowledge, although a couple of years ago I wonder if I can be for all of this. But mm-hmm. so yeah. our cutoff is November twenty second. That we have to be two weeks um, past the very last dose of whatever oh. uh, mm-hmm. option. Um, yeah. So that's coming up pretty quick. That we would have to have the first dose. Um, we received another email today, and it had some guidance in it, but it didn't say what was going to happen on the November twenty second. They've not actually come out today. You're going to be fired. Um, But like I know my supervisor has said, I can't imagine it's going to end well for those of you who um, don't comply with this mandate. So I don't know. I'm just really struggling with some things. Yeah, it's really tough. Really, really tough. And and there's some people that, well, you could afford 
to lose your job and other people mm-hmm. you just simply can't. Larry's in the studio, and Larry yes, has he, a lot of uh, feelings about this, and so he wants to share well, I, one I just, half of a I, feeling. Go ahead, Larry. I know somebody that filed for a religious exemption, and I think part of the reason he got it was he offered the accommodations that he could that they could offer him that he could do that would keep him more safe than otherwise. Like what? Like he would not eat with the other staff. He would not rent a car and drive alone with anybody else. Hmm. And in his job, that was mm-hmm. a situation. So if, if there are accommodations you can um, consider and offer, that might mm-hmm. help your case. Mm-hmm. Well, and in some places are just saying weekly well, testing, too. Yeah. Right. That was part of it. Mm-hmm. That, they offered weekly testing in July, and that's no longer on the table. Mm-hmm. They're not allowing mm-hmm. us to do that as an alternative. But I'm yeah. a field biologist. I spend time with wildlife and not with a lot of people. And when I'm mm-hmm. doing all of my office and my admin computer work, I'm at home. So I really don't feel like they need to um, to force this on some of us. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. Well, I'm glad you called us. And, um, I think lots I'm, of people are in this dilemma. Yeah, it's tough. And, right. And, I think uh, so, too. Yeah. We're just well, talking, yeah, we're just talking from a practical uh, standpoint. Let me, uh, I'm going to send you uh, a copy of... Uh, take your life back i hope that you would like that just our way of saying thank you but you know we're not political we're just talking about feelings about this Mm -hmm. we all have different feelings uh whether we're pro or not pro and and it's just tough it's a hard hard thing for a lot of people other people no problem they just go take a vaccine and and um but i do recommend if you are set on any particular opinion this eric clapton thing because it's just his experience. He's talking about his experience as a man. Mm-hmm. And um, he, he's, I mean, you know, not every word in there is pure. But he is a pretty uh, bright guy. He has been around a while. Speaking of bright guys, Larry, you're in the studio early today. Glad that you are. Uh, it looks like you have a bunch of paper there, a lot of things <laughs> that uh, you've got there. Tell us what you want to tell us. Well, we have workshops always coming up, and we yep. have testimonies, and this one gives credit to one of our workshops, so I want to share both of these and encourage folks to support or continue to support New Life. Okay. This, uh, this uh, lady uh, asked to be anonymous, so, but here's what she said. We're not using names. My marriage had been suffering deeply for 10 years. I've been a New Life follower for 25 years. Radio Daily Broadcast and the Boundaries books shaped my life. In 2018, we attended the Intimacy and Marriage Workshop. It was then that Paul, our phenomenal counselor, and the small group experience set me on a path which has changed my life forever. Five years later, after having attended Al-Anon regularly, I called in crisis, and when my husband's integrity and character when my husband's integrity and character was in question. It was, in my opinion, being compromised, and he's a pastor. Jeff at your call center comforted me in crisis and referred me to a personal counselor in my area. I, I separated from my husband, uh, home separation, until I could see more clearly for myself what I needed. On, in July, we had a breakthrough. My husband had a huge epiphany and change of heart. We'd been in four months of couples counseling. He was able to speak his heart to me in a way that allowed me to re-enter to our, fully to our relationship. Trust is slowly being rebuilt, and new life has been the catalyst for it all. Mm. Um, what's that's p- why we're here. I mean, that's yeah. wonderful. I mean, wow. Another life change. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just love that people's eyes are open to, yeah. you know, we have so many paradigm shifts. People get stuck seeing the same thing, doing the same things, and saying it's hopeless. And then when they can see it differently and they experience that shift, it's amazing. And it's a testament to what you three here do on radio all the time. I mean, radio daily broadcast was part of her mm. growing up and learning and listening and seeing yeah. how to deal with things. Now, technically, a catalyst is not affected by the reaction that is created by the catalyst. But we are affected. You see, we look at these things yeah. and it melts our hearts. It, yeah, it takes us true. to a position where we just want to keep doing what we're doing mm-hmm. and doing the workshops and doing radio. So I hate to be the science teacher here. I apologize <laughs> I uh, because I was I once upon a time. So I'm just saying, <laughs> but we are a catalyst that is changed. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Which. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, we say we get a front seat to watching the Holy Spirit we do. do work. We do. And we are so blessed to, to yeah. witness How all this. How can that not change How us? How can that not change us? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, from a scientific perspective, um, <laughs> it, it's amazing. But it I'll is tell you amazing. This, what, what a gift that New Life has been doing this for almost 35 years now. And it's still happening. It's happening every day. It's happening every workshop. We started with this one word. The most important word was transformation. We didn't want to just people to feel better for a little while. And that's what you're talking about. Change of heart in this pastor's heart. Hmm. Hosea said, plow up the hard ground of your heart. That's really what we're trying to do here. Because when that is plowed up, I mean, God's love can come in there and plant the seeds of righteousness, and that's what we want for every person. If you need some help in any area, you call us, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. If you can help us reach people with hope and help and healing, it's the same number, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We'll be back right after this for more of New Life Live. My husband's been addicted to porn since he was 10 years old. I found out about nine months into my marriage that he has a porn addiction. My name is Shelly Martinkus, and I want to personally invite you to the Restore Workshop. If you have been affected by betrayal, it might be that your husband has been looking at pornography. It might be an emotional, a physical affair. I would love for you to come join us. Restore has empowered me and has given me the tools to work through my anger, work through my pain, work through my confusion, and help me realize that I am worthy. Being here and being surrounded by people who get it has given me my power back. Please don't hesitate. Pick up the phone, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I would love to see you there. The Restore Workshop is coming to Washington, D.C., November 12th through the 14th. To register or to find out more, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE or go online to newlife.com. Thank you, Restore. You have changed my life forever. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. Your ministry has saved my life. If you struggle with emotional hurt, family or marriage problems, the pit of depression, or the pain of addictions, we can help. I'm down 100 pounds now from what I was. You guys are awesome. You are a blessing to America. (laughs) Our treatment programs provide clinically appropriate solutions from licensed professionals all in a biblical framework. I have had problems with alcohol. I think God has ordained this place to be His. You don't have to be a prisoner of your pain. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. She tells me that I'm a new man and I feel like a new man. It worked for me and it can work for them too. This time it is different. If you're ready to take the first step toward genuine spiritual and emotional healing, please call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Call one 800 New Life. That's 1-800-639-5433. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll-free 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. Steve Arterburn here. Really glad that you're with us here today on New Life Live. And, you know, um, I don't want to beat a dead horse nor do i ever want to beat a live horse even worse <laughs> when you beat a live horse but you could get in trouble for that okay so she calls about the vaccination not wanting it and um mm-hmm. and religious exemption and all that it's just another example of how uncertain these times are mm-hmm. all the different things we've never had to deal with before and i want to mention a resource that we have uh, it's, it's just one of my favorite resources ever, and it's 100 Days um, to Freedom from Fear and Anxiety. I'm holding it up now. If you're watching on YouTube, here it is. It's, it's um, one of these 100-day devotions. They're all like leathery, uh, this beautiful, comfortable cover. And there are insights, great quotes, uh, scripture, uh, a prayer, and then devotional material. But, um, you know, Mark Twain said here on the day 21, which is kind of humorous, got to throw in the humor, I've had a lot of worries in my life, most of which never happened, which is Mm -hmm. the way it is. But here's David Jeremiah. He says, set a clear focus in your life, and fear 
will be crowded out many times by the focus. The more you fix your eyes on God's purpose for you, the more you will overcome your fear. Now, that kind of makes sense. If I'm focused, if I'm anchored in, in my intention, my mind, then I'm not wandering, I'm not worrying, and I've got some security there. And that's from David Jeremiah. But this, this little book can really help you if there's fear or anxiety that's, that's really troubling you. And I think most of us um, are, maybe we don't even realize it, but there's just a, a little more trouble <laughs> in this day and age. And, um, and a lot of it is stuff we can't control or influence, but we can influence what's in our heart. That's, that's the main thing. Well, and, and that's the hard thing, Steve, is that most of us are used to dealing with our own internal struggles, right? Mm-hmm. The yes, stuff that's right. in our immediate sphere, um, um, family, friends. But when you have the world at large where there is so much collective fear and anxiety, yeah. so then you have fear on the outside and fear on the inside, and what can you count on then? Where is the stable ground? Mm -hmm. I think that is what so many people are feeling these days. We feel it in the air, practically, and then we have it in our own lives as well. And to hitchhike on one of your words you used earlier, Jill, um, there are so many dilemmas that we face, and a Mm -hmm. dilemma is a choice between two not great options. Right, yeah. And you know, a lot of times we want things to be clean and nice and, and mm-hmm. smooth. Mm-hmm. But many times we have to choose between two non-optimal choices. Right, And right. that's unpleasant. Mm-hmm. And it is very disconcerting to us. But we have to, just like, you know, our caller Bobby, she, right. she's going to have to make a decision toward one choice and or another. And neither are great ne- in neither, her mind, that's right? right? That's right. And, yeah. that, and so that's the true definition of a dilemma. Right. It's two well, non-optimal choices. Right. And and she was saying that she has several reasons, yeah, right? It right. depends on you hold something up and which angle are you looking at, right? right? Mm-hmm. What's the emphasis here? Mm-hmm. So that's another thing. It's not always but this, this, clear cut. But this isn't new. I mean, the concept of warfare, conscientious objectors, non-resistance, mm-hmm. the number of people. There was a famous movie out not long ago of a of a soldier who did not want to be a fighter so he became one of the a medic and oh, yeah, he was yeah. he he w- ended up being a hero because mm-hmm. he marched into war and hauled off all these these people who were hurt mm-hmm. that was and a great it, story it, it, it's a beautiful story mm-hmm. but he acted within his conscience mm-hmm. but then he also served and so there's right. this these tensions are always present mm-hmm. one of the things that we can do you know is that we can realize we got some stuff from the past that's Mm -hmm. creeping in and the more vulnerable we come or the more things on the outside that happen the more we might come to realize there's some things down in there that i've never dealt with and you know we we've heard a couple of uh, things on programs recently where it was somebody saying something Mm -hmm. uh, or somebody um, doing something that impacted the way the person felt, an opinion, an idea, shame, and it it was just an inappropriate thing that said. And I have to believe there are a lot of people that are listening right now that it's the same way. Your life has been impacted so, so hard by something someone said, and they did not know what they were doing. And I just, I pray that whatever damage that did, that you would seek out God's perspective on things, because God is for you, and uh, God is not there to shame you. God is rich in mercy. And so um, I hope and pray that somehow if somebody's really done a bad job with the words that they've said, that you fill your mind with God's Word. If you need a Bible, we have Bibles, and we can get you a Bible to fill your mind with God's Word. But really, it's part of an overall plan to live a better life, and and that's what we're called to do. All right, you hear the music, we're going to take a break. Come back, more of New Life Live. 
Mylon Yurkovich, of course, with Kay, the author of How We Love. It's the foundation of our Intimacy and Marriage Workshop on October 15th in Dallas, and you can find out about that at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. You can also get Jill's book, Forgiving Our Fathers and Mothers, right there. I have a 15-year-old. She is very defiant, rude, and disrespectful to me. Children don't come with a set of instructions, so what's a parent to do? She has very intense screaming fits. Do you feel equipped to tackle the tough decisions and issues that can have a lifelong impact on your kids? I have a 11-year-old daughter, and I'm trying to help her with the situation regarding school. Are your children ready to thrive in this culture? I just feel like I'm at the end of my rope with her. Let New Life's online one-day workshop, Fearless Parenting, Preparing for the Teen years help. It's Saturday, October 2nd. You'll learn about bullying, discipline, boundaries, challenges in parenting, smartphones, social media, and screen time, how your own struggles affect how you parent, and much more. With insightful teaching and the guidance of a credentialed New Life Counselor, this one-day workshop can equip you to meet the challenges of raising children in the 21st century. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE to register or to find out more. 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E. I was really living a very anxiety-filled life. I did go to take your life back. That's why I continue to support the ministry with the hope that it not only am I helping my own situation, that I'm helping others as well. You can help New Life Live stay on the air by joining Club New Life today. When you sign up to support us monthly through Club New Life, we'll send you the New Life member thank you gift of the New Life Journal, 100 Days of Peace, Seven Ways to Choose Healing, Growth Has No Boundaries, a Restoration Bible, and a New Life Grocery Tote to hold it all. Plus, there are ongoing benefits, like access to the Club New Life video library, the monthly Club New Life CD or download, quarterly resources, free shipping on purchased resources, and discounts on workshops. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. We're glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. Steve Artibernier, really glad that you're with us here today, wherever you are. Hope it's going to be a better day. We'll go back to the phones uh, in just one second. Jen, hold on. We'll get to you. Uh, did I say Jen? Yeah, okay. And uh, by the way, if you are interested in having a husband with integrity. Wouldn't that be something? Uh, to have a real life husband with integrity. October 8th, 9th, and 10th, well, that's every man's battle in Atlanta. And what a great, great experience that is. You know, we talk about every man's battle a lot, and you might just, it, you might get so used to us talking about it that you forget 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you know, something was happening in the life of your husband. And now, it's there. And we've got, I mean, we've worked on this. We've refined this workshop, and it could really change everything for you. And the end result isn't that some guy stops lusting or looking at pornography. That, Yeah, that happened. But what we love to see is there's a, an attunement with the person he's married to. There is a connection, an intimacy that's deeper than maybe you ever dreamed. That's what is on the other side of every man's battle. And so if you're married to somebody that needs this, then you call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We'll help you with some strategies on how to make that happen. All right, let's go to Jen, see uh, what is on her mind. Hi, you're on with Mylon Yurkovich and Dr. Jill Hubbard. How you doing? Um, good. Hi. I'm calling. I have a child that was recently diagnosed with dyslexia and... Um, you know, with all the challenges that we have as parents in general, my main struggle is trying to figure out a way for him to, he's very defeated, very upset, um, very fr easily frustrated, and um, comes home from school just feeling left out and lonely and kind of bullied at times, but I can just tell it's, it's a lot to do with his confidence, and my husband and I do so much to pour into this poor boy, and and um, we just think he's amazing, and we're just at a loss in what to do next when it comes to his confidence. 
So, um, Jill, Mylon, any, either of you worked with dyslexia? Well, I have worked with so many ways and aspects in which people don't fit in. Mm-hmm. And so Learning I Learning disabilities or otherwise, that's right? That's right. Mm-hmm. Learning disabilities, physical disabilities, et cetera, et cetera. So, Jen, this is a great question because... I, I don't remember the name of the author. Um, I spoke at a conference, and this was one of the conference speakers, and she wrote a book called What Kind of Smart Are You? And um, I have a son who did not fit into the school system well. Uh, he just, that wasn't his, <laughs> that just wasn't going to be his, the place he excelled. But he's one of the smartest people I know, and he's brilliant in certain ways. His kinesthetic awareness is is absolutely off the charts. So he's one of these guys who could probably get in a helicopter and make it fly just because mm-hmm. he has all the feel of how to make something work. I'm being a little extreme there, but I want to illustrate my point. <laughs> right. Okay. Let's hope he doesn't. Yeah. Well, yeah. I hope People's he does. People's talents show up differently. They do. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I would find the ways that he does excel Mm -hmm. and celebrate that with him and help him understand that not everybody fits in precisely as the majority of students. As a matter of fact, when I was a high school teacher, the statistics were, you know, the high school or the school system catches about 70% of the kids Mm -hmm. and it doesn't catch. In other words, it misses 30% of the kids. And more of those are boys. That it actually quite, quite often, misses. Jill, that's absolutely right. So yeah. to help him celebrate what he's really great at mm-hmm. and to help him see that he will be able to do things other kids can't do. Well, and I think to, to come to terms with and accept that he does not have a neurotypical brain, right? His brain functions differently and to really understand his disability because he does have to learn how to cope with it and how to compensate for it. Mm-hmm. And then to bring in uh, pe- learning specialists, people that can help him come up with strategies for how to compensate for it. Um, and it takes a lot of effort, but it's doable. Mm-hmm. It's really doable. And this doesn't make him not okay, right? So, so many people are not neurotypical. And right. like you were saying, you know, contribute great things. But as a, a, a kid, um, and depending, I, I don't know if we know his age, but elementary school, that's where you are um, getting reactions from your peers, mm-hmm. right? So are there other things, Jen, besides his dyslexia that maybe he also needs some help with? You mentioned his confidence, okay? How were his social skills? Um, are there thing, Is he ahead of the curve in maturity or behind the curve in maturity? And so I think working on a lot of aspects and not making this dyslexia as the thing that defines him. Mm-hmm. It's one thing about him. It's an anomaly about him. Right? I, I agree. And I would... I don't want to be political here. Okay. Uh, but I Go will, ahead. I will be. No, don't. Okay, I will be because um, our governor of California, mm-hmm. Gavin Newsom, is dyslexic. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. I didn't know and that. And he's very articulate, and mm-hmm. he has a, a tremendous ca- capacity to uh, speak intelligently. But he has to make special notes to himself and himself when he has notes or whatever he's using. But he's an example of a person who has a diagnosis of dyslexia. Mm -hmm. I read this article not long ago, but he has moved into a place where he's highly successful Mm -hmm. in in terms of his capacity to be in front of people. So um, I think it's important to put a person like that and other famous people who have certain disabilities but have worked through them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I actually have a cousin, too, that is dyslexic, and mm-hmm. school was very hard for her, mm-hmm. but she pushed through, now runs her own business, is highly successful. Right. She trains people in lifeguarding and swimming and all kinds of health mm-hmm. um, issues, CPR, mm-hmm. things okay. like that. To your point, uh, Whoopi Goldberg, <laughs> Steven Spielberg. Your son um, is in good company is what we're trying to say. Henry Winkler, <laughs> the Fonz. Which you wouldn't um, know that, right? Kira Knightley. All those these people. are yeah. These are all uh, dyslexic folks. So, um, 
I have, uh, my assistant is actually an author, and she's written a book on dyslexia, and I can send it to you. It, it's called uh, Lexi Dias and, and the Power of Dyslexia. And what she's done, she's taken these problems and uh, presented them to kids in her book uh, from the perspective of uh, a superhero and, and the positive, the upside of these things and, and what they do. And I'll get that to you but it's called lexi l-e-x-i space d-i-a-s and uh, you can get it on amazon that's a clever uh, title yeah that yeah. is well it's a clever series and uh yeah so um yeah i'll get that to you and i i hope that's Thank helpful you. i appreciate your phone call we don't do enough about this but we are doing a, a whole mm -hmm. series of books our first two books understanding and loving a child with adhd and then the second one is on uh, the your child who's smoking pot and we do have those available for anybody who's struggling in that area but uh yeah we'll get that to you thank you uh, for your call i've got uh, another caller to go to here and that's going to be who is this amazing caller i can't get my screen open quick enough it is Ray. Hi, Ray from Fresno. How are you? Hi. Hi. What's going on? Well, I'll be right back. Okay. Um, well, my, I have, okay, so I have two daughters that play a sport. Okay. And the 16-year-old loves to play this sport, and my 13-year-old is not a fan of it at all. Okay. Um, but we have to travel because it's an uncommon sport. We have to travel an hour each way, five to six days a week. And so it's two hours a day of driving, two hours a day of practice, and then tournaments on the weekend. Wow. So it is our entire life right now. And mm -hmm. the younger one is very artistic. She likes to be in the art club. She does Irish dancing after school. She likes to do things that are, don't have anything to do with sports, really. And my husband insists that girls especially have to be in sports and if they're not in sports then they're going to have problems with self-esteem and all this other stuff so this year i let him insist that she do it this year and i think that he's going to push for it next year as well and she's just not a fan so um i i don't know like sh i can see the benefit i can see the benefit of her doing it already this year in her confidence and whatever she still insists she hates it, even though she seems like she's having fun. So I don't know. My other daughter's going to be a senior this year, and so I don't know if next year. So I don't know if I go ahead and let him insist that she do it next year, and then she can make her own decision for the year after. Next year, she'll be in ninth grade. Okay. Um, glad you called. Hold on. Going to go to a break. I think we can help you. Big dilemma. We all want our kids to be healthy, but sometimes moving them toward one kind of health produces a different kind of dishealth. For most of my life, I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against, and families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit its addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. I'm an addict, and I'm trying to get God in my life again. You seem to be able to get to the crux of a problem quickly. Our Christ-centered treatment programs can help you break free to embrace all that God has for you and your family. I just want to thank you guys for bringing me to a relationship with Jesus. There really is help for marital problems, depression, addictions, panic attacks, and feelings of hopelessness. I came back with so many tools to help me prepare myself to fight this struggle and this battle that I have every day. You can start living again today. Living the life God intended for you. Help is available at 1-800. 
new life. They did care, and they did follow up very lovingly, and it made all the difference in my life. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Someone who cares is waiting at the other end of the phone. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Just call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-639-5433. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We're back, Steve Artiburn here. So, I have something to say, Ray, about this, and then I'll turn it over to Mylon and Jill. Uh, Madeline, my oldest daughter, she's 30. She started playing soccer at age six. She played through high school she went to college she played four years in college she's 30 years old she is on three soccer teams today and one of them is a semi-pro team that won first place in their division so i'm a soccer dad now i have a 12 year old that when she was six we went out to play soccer because i i want i love soccer i want to be part of that uh she it it, it was too cold for her so so (laughs) So here's what I think. I think me getting her to go experience that was a good thing. And sometimes we need to push our kids to try something. But to push our kids to continue something they don't want to do, I think, is really damaging. And any kind of benefit, like everybody needs a sport or whatever, is it's just totally negated because of that kind of of pressure. So while I would love for her to have been a soccer child, she wasn't. Her mom played volleyball all through high school. So a couple of years later, her mom introduces her to volleyball, which at her age was more than volleyball. It was watch the ball come over the net and bounce off the floor. But I'm telling you, when that didn't work out for her, she discovered climbing, and she's one of the most creative. She, she writes better than I do at age 12. I'm not kidding you. And so we've got to let kids wow. find their stuff. And I am not for any parent agreeing, yeah, let's pressure our child to do something for a lot of hours of the day that they don't want to do. I'm not for that. Right. Okay, I'm with you on that one. Yeah, and you have to ask yourself, what's the motivation for this? And what you did in exposing your daughter to an activity, has that been served? And so who is this for now? If you have a kid that's... He saying, wants our family to be together. Oh, okay, so this is for... He wants, he wants all four of us to be together. I understand that, but this is for your husband. This isn't for your daughter. And his world revolves around this sport and so that's great but but really you've got this child that has these other talents and you said she's into irish dancing dancing is a sport actually so she has these other talents she's given it a try why hold her back from exploring her other talents why not let her i mean this is adolescence is a time for trying on different identities to see what is me, what isn't me. And so yeah. I, I think at a certain point she, you know, she's going to start to push back or she might conform and, and she's then what? She's been trying to push back, but the, she is the very sweet, compliant one. Yeah. So, you, so she's just going to shut down then. Right, if she doesn't have a voice in this family. Yeah. And then she won't want to be with the family. Mm-hmm. See, the, right. the very thing your husband the very thing your husband wants, he's not going to get if he forces her into an artificial compliance. Right, or now, she's going to spend her adult he- uh, adulthood in therapy figuring this out, right? Yeah, and and I just yeah. I just would add two more things, Ray. Number one, coaches can be very strong-willed and domineering. Uh, that's why they're a coach, and that's why um, they are good at what they do. Good, at, if, if it, they're good if they're strong-willed and domineering because they make the team do what they're supposed to do, and they mm-hmm. end up usually mm-hmm. winning. And my question to you, Ray, is how hard is it for you to have a voice with your husband? Good point. <laughs> good point. 
I'm getting, I'm getting better at it. I've been, I've been, I've actually called in before. Um, I'm, I'm getting better at it, but I have always been, you have stronger opinions about it. So we'll go with your opinions. But on this one, I feel like pushing back. Like, I think that it's damaging her heart, honestly. Like, she feels like if she's not, this is what she tells me, if she's not doing this sport, she feels like dad's just not going to like her as much. He's not going to be as interested in her because her sister's interested in what interests him. Okay, so So here's the deal. Your husband needs to listen to this program. Mm -hmm. And your husband needs... To hear a, that he needs to yeah. sit down with her and say, I want you to know the principle that I'm trying to uphold is a keeping our family all being together. But that principle has not taken into consideration your personality. Mm-hmm. And this isn't something that I should be forcing on you because the way I'm thinking we're all together produces resentment, bitterness, and disconnection with you so i want you to know if you never ever play another ounce of any sport i love you i want to Mm -hmm. help you be all that you can be you are my daughter i am proud of you and i am not going to be an idiot who only loves the child that does the stuff i want them to do i'm Mm -hmm. not that stupid of a dad that i would cram this down your throat because you and then you accept it because you think that's the only way to get my love i'm not that stupid i'm not going to do that and i am so sorry i've given you that impression because your mom has told me that that's how you have felt Mm -hmm. and reacted and i'm not going to do that i love you be the person god has created you to be so steve well stated um Mm -hmm. now ray i'm going to tell you one more thing if i may I have two people, I have four adult sons and daughters and my wife. So I have two artists in that cluster of people, an adult son and my wife. And may I just tell you, they are, they Mm -hmm. don't fit into the regimented team sports world. They excel in individual things that they select. Uh, on top of that, my son, who's an artist, is also an introvert. So he's not drawn toward the group activities. He was the surfer, skateboarder guy. And he, he's yeah. an amazing waterman. Mm-hmm. And he is a great dad. And he's a phenomenal person. But he wasn't a sports guy. And my wife is not either. And she's the artist. So you really have to learn to celebrate that artistic person. Because oh, yeah. they don't march to the same beat of a drum and why can't the family be together at her performance of irish dancing or at her art exhibit or whatever it is that she's doing each person should be celebrated and rallied around in a family well and this is going to be a place ray this is also going to be a loss for your husband a place of loss because he's trying to hold on to something that's dear to him and well, he will have he to knows. wrestle. He will have to wrestle with mm-hmm. this letting go and uh, and no. affirming your daughter that she is special as well. And, and you can let him know that you feel for him because you know that this is going to be mm-hmm. a loss. That it is going to be very difficult for him, and that that you have great compassion for that. Oh my goodness! You know, here's the sad thing: when a dad does something like that. Uh, the daughter ends up hating the mother. I mean, we see this all the time, that mm-hmm. she's tra- trying to do all the right stuff, but the daughter needs to be saved from it, you know? And and then she's angry because mom never helped me. Well, and, and Mylon brought up a good point. I think mom and youngest daughter are very similar. Yeah, right. right. So mom needs to learn to step up to help daughter. Mm-hmm. Well, absolutely. Hope we've helped you because if we helped you, I think we've helped a lot of people who end up in this same situation. If you need some help, it's 1-800-NEW-LIFE. If you can help us, same number, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Thank you, Mylon. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Appreciate you guys. Love you, care about you, and all who listen, watch, and support us. God bless you. See you next time. Thanks for listening. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you, but you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry. 
to make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again tomorrow for New Life Live. Hi, thank you for watching New Life Live. You know, New Life Live is a Christian counseling program where we deal with the hard questions about life, relationships, kids, free choice, freedom of will, whatever. It's all right there on New Life Live every day, every weekday, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. If you want to call into the live broadcast, you can find the schedule on newlife.com or click the social media link right below. You can see every episode of New Life Live on the New Life YouTube channel. Watch it with a friend, watch it later. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you'll never miss another episode. So if you want to listen on the go, download the app. The link is right below. And I hope if you need some information, if you want to get some help, you'll call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. And I'll see you next time.